guys. I just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I decided to keep my makeup on because I don't think I'm going to be wearing makeup tomorrow. I'm just going to clean like my entire room tomorrow. But I did have work today, so I just got home from work. Um, so I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer and then I used the Clarins Lip Oil. And then I set my eyes with the Dior powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette, I decided to go into the ColourPop Hocus Pocus 2 palette. Because I felt like doing like kind of a greenish, orangey look. And also since I was wearing this shirt today with like green jeans, I wanted to use this palette because it was like perfect because it has the green and orange in it. And I think that the green and orange shades perform beautifully. These purple shades aren't like the best, but like literally every other shade in this palette is so good. It's literally like just this one shade that's not very good. But like all these other shades perform beautifully. So I just went into Spellbook in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Night of Sins. And then I used Till Midnight on the outer corners. And then for the lid, I used Brew Another Bash, which is such a beautiful, like, electric green. And then for the inner corners, I used Candle is a Light. So that's it. That's all I used today, and it looked really pretty. And then I used um, Brighter Days from Blend Bunny on the brow bone. And then for my waterline, I used the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade um, A Glow. And then I used the Essence Lash Primer. And then for my mascara, I went into the Lancome Hypnose Mascara and then the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. And then I primed my face with the Tower 28 SOS Spray and the Elf Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. Sorry, I just forgot to grab my book. And then for my foundation, I went into the uh, Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation in the shade 00. My hair is not cooperating. And then for my concealer, I went into the Urban Decay Naked Quickie Concealer in the shade 10NN. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs Powder. And then I set my face with the Dior Powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into the Marc Jacobs Bronzer in the shade Tantric. It's one right here. And then for my blush, I went into the M Cosmetics Blush in the shade Pers persimmon persimmon the heaven's glow radiant veil blush in the shade persimmon i don't know why i can't speak right now i'm just really tired today i can't wait to rip my makeup off now even though again i'm probably not wearing makeup tomorrow because i don't plan on going anywhere and then i'm supposed to see my boyfriend on thursday and then friday i'm supposed to see my best friend and then saturday and sunday i don't really know what my plans are yet and then for my highlight, I went into the Hocus Pocus 2 highlighter in the shade Find the Book. It's still such a gorgeous highlighter. It's one of my favorites to use in the fall. It's just such a good one. And then I set my face with the um, Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the um, Essence Brow Gel. And what's so funny is that I wore the this Hocus Pocus 2 palette on the day that I went to American Dream um when I told you guys that I wore it that day and then what's so funny is that one these two customers that I was just thinking about this morning and I was like I haven't seen them in a while they come into the store like a lot and I just like talk to them all the time they're so sweet they're just like this older couple that like always dress in like rocker clothing but they're just such sweet people and I was like, oh my god, I was just thinking about you guys. And then they were talking about um, the big mall, and they thought it was in Westchester. I'm like, no, it's actually in Jersey. I actually just went there for my birthday, and we talked about it. And I'm wearing the same eyeshadow palette that I wore when I went to American Dream, and we were talking about it today, and I was thinking about them. Isn't that weird? I don't know. I just find some of that shit weird. I don't know. I feel like sometimes I can, like, manifest things just by, like, thinking about them. Because I was like, I was just thinking about them this morning. And I was like, I haven't seen them in a while. And then she literally, when she came into the store, she was like, yeah, we, you know, I was thinking, like, oh, you haven't seen us in a while. And I hadn't even said anything. I was like, yeah, it has been a while. I was like, I was just thinking about you guys. I was like, just so weird. I don't know. I was actually going to, I was thinking about wearing a different eyeshadow palette today. And I was like, no, I'm going to wear this one. I don't know. Maybe I just hocus pocus them into the store. I don't know. It's just so weird. And this is the only day I was scheduled to work this week. And they just so happened to come to the store today. I don't know. 
And then for my lips, I went into the Hocus Pocus Lippy in the shade um, Calming Circle, which is like the light nude one. So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as the reading update goes, I did finish... Um, did I say I finished Pumpkin Spice Cafe last yesterday? I did, and then I also finished Finale last night because I was listening to a lot of it. And then I got up to, like, page almost 400, so then I only had 70 pages to read by the time I hit my bed. So I was like, I'm just going to finish it, and I finished it, and I absolutely loved that one. That one was a five stars for me. I think I'm only going to have four or five stars this month, but this one was definitely a five star. I just loved it so much. I'm so happy that I read this trilogy. I'm like, I really need to read more trilogies or duologies because like I said, I, the, I felt like the only way I was going to find a five star again was whether I got sucked into like a series of some sort. And I'm like, I feel like I'm going to find a five star. And I did. And I absolutely loved it. It was just so good. I'm so glad I finally read the Caraval trilogy. And it was just chef's kiss. I loved it. And then the next book I decided to pick up is I finally am reading The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This has 1.5 million ratings on Goodreads. And for some reason, I've just never gotten to it. I've told you guys I have like a love-hate relationship with Ollie. With Allie Hazelwood's books, I just don't love her books, but so far I am really enjoying this. I'm on page 95. I actually did find the audiobook on YouTube as well, so I did listen to quite a bit of it today because I just didn't have time to physically read before I went to work today because I had to work at 1 for some reason. Usually I don't work until like 3 or 4 o'clock, but for some reason I was scheduled at 1 today. Um, but then I'm also listening to this chapter six, so I'm probably on page like a hundred something by this point. And so far, I am really enjoying this, but that's what, what's happened with Allie Hazelwood books for me, and that's why I haven't been so inspired to like pick up her books again and read them. But I'm like, I keep on buying her books, I need to actually read them. And this one was on my TBR for this month, so I'm finally getting to it. But what I find with her books is that I enjoy, like, the beginning and, like, the first, like, 100 or 150 pages. And then once I hit, like, the middle, it's either whether or not I'm going to continue enjoying the story. Like, Check and Mate, I enjoyed a lot more until, like, maybe, like, the last third of it was what really annoyed me. But this one I really am enjoying so far. I think it's very funny and I'm having a good time. So hopefully we will keep that up. I have a feeling this is probably going to be my favorite one that I've read from her so far. So maybe this one will be like an, a determination whether or not I actually like her as an author. Because for some reason I just really do want to give her books a chance. And really just want to try to at least like one of her books. I feel like that's how some readers are. It's like... With Riley Saker, I'm done with him. I don't think I'm ever going to read another book from him. Because it went from absolutely amazing to okay to terrible. With Allie Hazelwood, I feel like it went to terrible to okay. And I feel like this one is going to be good. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to really enjoy this one. But so far, I'm only like almost 100 pages in, which is pretty good amount for me to decide whether or not I'm gonna like it but sometimes romance books I don't know until like the last third so we will see so I will get back to you guys when I finish it so bye okay so hey there guys just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today so I just did another simple no makeup makeup look pretty much with some blush and highlight some tinted moisturizer some mascara and some lip oil so um, cause I didn't have that many plans today. I was actually just going to go to my local bookstore and pick up a book that I think they only had two copies of because I messaged them on Instagram last night and I was like, wow, you already have this book already. I was like, I want to pick this up. I was like, can you hold it for me and I'll come pick it up tomorrow. And they're like, yeah. So I already went out today. So I just went there and got the book. I didn't get any other books. 
there was like no other books there that I really wanted to get. And usually they have like really good used books there, but I just didn't want to. And then I stopped at this place called Roots and I got myself a smoothie just because like I just wanted some kind of drink. Um, and this one's like a dragon fruit blueberry banana one. It's pretty good. This was $11. <laughs> Why are smoothies so expensive? I should have just went to Tropical Smoothie, but I don't know. I just wanted to get myself a little drink. I always like trying new drinks, so. And this place was, like, right down the street from the bookstore. It was, like, not even two minutes away, so I was like, I'll just go there and get a smoothie. Um, Because I wasn't really that hungry, and I was like, if I just have a smoothie, and then I might just get, like, a snack or something. So I went back to, like, my area because, like, the bookstore is still in my town, but you have to drive there. Like, it takes, like, a good 10 minutes to get there. It's not like it's that far. So, I just went there, and then I came back to my area and just got McDonald's fries because I wanted, like, a little snack of something, but they weren't even that good. So, I almost forgot the point of this to clip. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll just, let me just tell you what I did today. <laughs> So I primed my face with the Tower 28 SOS Spray and the Say Star Glow Super Gel Primer. And then for my tinted moisturizer, I just went into the ColourPop one. I swear, this tinted moisturizer is so natural looking on your skin that like most of the coverage that is on my face is from the concealer that I'm wearing. So this is the Pretty Fresh Hydrolonic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. Like I could just be good to go with this and just like throw it underneath my eyes and some powder and mascara on and that's it. But this just makes your skin look so natural. Like it still looks like you're wearing nothing after you blend it out. It just looks so beautifully natural on your skin. And then for the concealer, oh, I'm in the shade Fair, Fair 1N. I'm I'm hoping that ColourPop will come out with some other complexion products sometime soon. Like, this was the last complexion product they ever came out with, and this was such a banger. I'm like, why is it that they haven't released a complexion product in, like, two years almost? I was still waiting for, like, a, a lighter coverage foundation from them, and they never released one, so I don't know. And then for my concealer, I just went into the Maybelline Dark Circle Eraser in the shade 95 Ivory. And then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder. And then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. And then for my bronzer, I just went into the ColourPop Alviva Beach Bronzer. And then for my blush, I just went into Max Melba, which is this one right here in my singles palette. Because I just felt like throwing on makeup and leaving because... I wanted to leave by two the latest and I did I did this in like 15 minutes and didn't even take me that long and then for my highlight I just went into the hello halo blush lighter in the shade after sex glow I hate that I really hate that name but it's such a pretty highlight and then I just set my face with the Tara 28 spray again and then I just set my brows with the essence brow gel and then for my lips I just went into the summer Fridays the Summer Fridays Lip Oil. <sighs> Sorry, my dogs are barking. My dog Luna goes crazy when my mom dumps the water out of the humidifier from the basement. So she just like freaks out whenever there's like a container of water. Like when my mom goes outside to like water the plants and she has to fill up the water jug. She freaks out. So, <laughs> um... So this is the shade, the Dream Lip Oil in the shade Blush Dreams. And that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as the reading update goes, I'm still reading The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. And I am happy to report that I'm actually really enjoying this one. I just think it's the exact fluffy romance that I needed right now. I just needed something a little bit lighter um, after reading Caraval because I it was... I did, I definitely did cry at the end of that book. It was just so good. I was like, I just need a cute little romance. And I actually really like this. It's actually really funny. It's entertaining. And I've been having a good time with it. I felt like I was going to find an Allie Hazelwood book that I actually enjoyed. And so far, this is the one I have definitely enjoyed the most because I really did not like Bride and I really didn't like Check and Mate that much. So 
I'm on page 306. I almost forgot to update you guys what page I'm on. I'm just, I'm tired, so. And then, I don't know if I said this yesterday, but the book I picked up that I am able to read a week early is Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter. This is the sequel to um, Better Than the Movies. I've been hearing very mixed reviews about this one, but I'm so excited. I knew this was going to be on the tip top of my list once it came out, and I can't believe they had it this early. They got it in yesterday, and like I said, I think they only had two copies. So I'm like, can you please hold that for me? And I'm so happy I snagged one of them because I think there's only one out on the floor now. But this one they were holding behind the counter for me. I think this one is pretty much... I just love her writing and I love her YA... Um, her YA books. Let's see who she put in the acknowledgments because sometimes she puts like really good YouTubers in the acknowledgments that I love. Now that's the end of the book. The heck is going on? Hmm. Huh. Ah, oh, she put Larry in there. It says, um, Haley Pham and Steph Boer. Oh my god, I really love both of them. It says, you're, you're like bookish serotonin and I adore your content. And Larissa Kambusano, which is like the best YouTuber ever. It says, you always make me cackle like a demented clown while I add far too many books to my TBR. Also, FYI, I would so be down for a reality show that's just you and Giant doing life. Oh, that's so cute. It's probably why she loves this book so much, but she actually didn't even mention that she was in the acknowledgments of this. How cute! I love that. I just like reading her acknowledgments because, like I said, she usually puts, um, like, like I said, really cute acknowledgments of, like, um, of, like, YouTubers that I really love watching. But this is now her fourth YA book, and I've read all of her YA books. I've read Better Than the Movies, The Do-Over, and Betting on You, and Betting on You was my absolute favorite. I just loved that book so much. And just her books just bring me such joy because I think it's really the covers that, like, just do it for me. It's, like, what makes you not buy this book? Because her color, her colorful covers just do it for me. So I'm so excited to read this next. You, you can tell how excited I am. So I, I think I'm going to start that either later because I should finish this hopefully by tonight. Um, I'm just going to continue listening to it on YouTube. I actually found this other channel that actually... Um, but I read like 100 pages of it like physically, but... I've actually listened to probably 200 pages so far. <laughs> I'm going to continue listening to it right now. And then I probably should only have like 60 pages left. Or like even 50 pages left to read physically. So yeah, that's the plan. Because I have no life. But I'm just going to clean some more. So bye. Hey, so hey there guys so i just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today so i did go on a date with my boyfriend earlier we went to the ramen place that i told you guys about i've been wanting to go back there because their ramen was just so good so we ended up going back there to eat and then we just went to target afterwards and that was pretty much it but i didn't see him until like 5 30 and i didn't leave till like almost eight o'clock so we spent like a couple of hours together so I primed my eyes with the ColourPop Party Proof Primer. Oh, no, actually I just used concealer because I wasn't even sure if I was going to see him today because he didn't even text me until like 4 o'clock. So. But I'm wearing this new bookish shirt that I got. Super cute. Just a, It's just a book with fall leaves on it. But I don't know. I just love to like the simple design. And I got this off of this website called Piper and Ivy. And they were doing like a promotion where... You could get one tea and get the second tea free. So I only paid like I think $28, $29 
for two t-shirts because then you just had to pay for one in the shipping so you get a free t-shirt so I was like why not so I got this one and I also got the one that was in my October TBR video you're probably not going to see this clip until way after that video is up I actually already filmed my TBR because I was just way too excited to film it with the new cart that I got um so I'll probably put it up this weekend like before my wrap up because I just too get too excited to film my TBR at this point. So I just used, um, so I primed my face first with the um, Tower 28 SOS spray and the Say Star Glow Super Gel Primer. And then I just went into the same thing I used yesterday was the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. So I was just going to do a no makeup makeup look because I, again, had no idea what I was doing today. And this is the shade Fair 1N. And then for my concealer, I went into the Kulfi Concealer in the shade bad bottom and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath labs powder and then I also set my eyes with the same powder and then I set my face with the ColourPop pretty fresh powder and then for my eyeshadow palette I went into the ColourPop ornate palette because I actually haven't used this one in a hot second and I actually really like using this one during the fall time and I thought that these colors just went really well with this shirt so I went into charisma in the crease and then I just darkened up the defining area on the outer corners with the shade called shh <laughs> I feel so weird every time I say that and then for my lid I went into the center shade called fever and then for the inner corners I used bohem and that was it I just used those four shades and I really liked how it looked <coughs> Sorry, currently dying. And then I actually forgot to go into my brow bone highlight. I like reminded myself earlier when I was doing my makeup and then I just flat out forgot. So oops. And then I just went into the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. I was about to say Plencil in the shade Limitless Brown. And then for my mascara, I just went into the same mascara, the ColourPop Lengthening Mascara on the top and bottom lashes. And then for my bronzer, I went into the Tara 28 bronzer in the shade um, Bronzino Sun Coast. I just decided to use this because I was actually waiting for my bronzer brush to be dry because I did wash my makeup brushes last night. It's pretty much dry now at this point, but before it was still a little bit damp. So I think it's pretty much dry. The only one I'm still waiting on to be dry is this powder one from ColourPop, but it should be dry by tomorrow. It's still a tiny bit damp, but I think it'll be dry by tomorrow. Um, and then for my blush, I went into the ColourPop blush um, from the same collection in the shade Ch Chice. I don't know how to say that, but that's what the shade name is called. Um, just because I wanted to use the same blush from the collection as I drop it on the floor. Brilliant job, Caitlin. And then for my highlight, I went into the Milk Makeup Highlighter in the shade uh, Flex Highlighter. How rude. In the shade Iced. I honestly, this doesn't smell bad. I think it was just the brush I was using. I don't know. It smelled a little funky, but I don't think it's the actual highlight. I just wanted to use like a blinding gold highlighter today. And I was like, you know what? I haven't used this one in a hot second. So I used that one today. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips, I just threw on a lipstick. I really need... The next cleaning task I need to do is clean out my purses. Because I need to reorganize my lip products. So that's the next task. And then after that, I have to reorganize my desk. So I keep on trying to do at least one cleaning task a day. I already have to put my clean clothes away over there. Hold on a second. Wait, hold okay, on. Okay, sorry. I just have to put something away. And then for my lips, I just went into my Merit lipstick in the shade um, and Tibes. I still can never say that, but I haven't used this one in a little while. And also this color just went so well with this shirt. I can't believe how well it went. So I just went in with that. Um, so that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I am still reading Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter. I just started this 
last night, probably around like eight o'clock, and I'm already 242 pages in. Lynn Painter books really don't take me any time to read, but honestly, this book is not really hitting. It's not really, I don't really think that this was necessary, and I'm kind of agreeing with other people's reviews of this book. Like, it's not a one star for me, but honestly, I'm getting really bored. Like, I don't know. There's, like, absolutely no romance going on. And also, like, usually I have a really good time with Lynn Painter books because they make me laugh, like, almost, like, the entire time that I'm reading them. And I really love, like, the banter and the dialogue that she writes between the two main characters, usually. Like, that's why I loved Better Than the Movies and The Do-Over and Betting on You. Betting on You was still my favorite book from her, and I remember how good the banter was in that book. Then I'm like, where is the humor in this book? Like, I understand, like, if she, she she's kind of going in a more serious direction with this, but also, like, it's getting too repetitive that only, like, the, the story is only revolving around this one situation, and I'm kind of getting a little bored, but at the same time, I feel like things have just picked up right now, but it wasn't until, like, page 215 or something, like, basically halfway through, like, basically the first half was all about Wes's baseball interview because he decided to return to college. So, and I was like, did we really need 200 pages of buildup of that? So, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be probably my least favorite Lynn Painter book so far. I even had a better time with, um, Happily Never After, because there were still some really funny lines in that book. So I usually, again, recommend, I recommend Lynn Painter's YA books all the time, because a lot of people on, like, Facebook groups that I'm a part of, a lot of, like, moms or, like, moms with daughters are always trying to find books that don't have really smut in them, but they want to recommend, like, a romance book to their kids or women just want to read a non-smutty romance book, I always recommend Lynn Painter's books because they're such a fun, good time. And like I've said before, YA books sometimes are better than the adult books. But honestly, none of the new releases I read this month, especially the romance books, really hit. Life Impossible was good, and The Games God's Play, I felt more romance in that book than I did in the three romances that I read this year. I mean, this month. Because primetime romance was not that great, but there was still romance involved at some point. Um, my Vampire Plus One was a pretty fun time, and I actually had quite a fun time reading that book. I still had a good time reading it. It was just a fluffy book. But this, it's just, it's boring. I'm just, like, not really caring about picking this book up, but I am still gonna finish it because I'm already, like, more than halfway through, so I'm probably gonna read another, like, 60-ish pages. But it's only 11.15 right now, and I'm just gonna sit and read for the rest of the night, so I want to get through quite a bit of this. But I don't know. It's just like making me not want to pick it up. And I felt the absolute opposite way when I was reading Betting on You. I could not wait to get back to reading that book. I wouldn't stop thinking about it. So it's like, I really haven't found a five-star romance. Even like, I even enjoyed Love Hypothesis more than this. And that's crazy because I felt like with Allie Hazelwood, I might find a book that I would enjoy eventually. And I can see why that book is so popular. And now I'll finally be able to film my most popular romance books reads so I can finally like compare those and talk to you guys about the romance authors that I've read and do like a really well-rounded video of all the romance books that I've read and the most popular romance books and which books I've read and which books I haven't and which books I didn't like. But so far, 
this isn't really doing it for me. And I was really excited about this one because I was like, ooh, another Lynn Painter book. I can't wait. But there's just, there's no humor in this. I'm not laughing at anything. I'm just like, okay, we have to hear Wes's sob story again. Like, it's just not... And again, there's nothing wrong with, like, you know, going in a more serious direction. But that's not why people read Lynn Painter books. Like, they read them to have a good time. And I understand it's nothing like the movies. But honestly, I feel like the quotes that she is throwing into, like, the beginning of the chapters... They don't relate, the chapter doesn't relate to the quotes, like, whatsoever. Like, in Better Than the Movies, when she would throw, like, a a movie quote in there, because every single chapter related to, like, a famous romance movie, because, um, sorry that I'm ranting about this. I'm just, like, really annoyed, because I thought I was going to like this book a lot more than I am, and I'm really not. Um, the thing about Liz is that she would always, you know, think that her life was a romance movie. And now I understand this is real life. It's nothing like the movies, but also like, it's just a little bit too serious. It's taking itself way too seriously for what it is. But also I feel like with like serious situations, especially like teenagers, like they're college students right now. There's usually, like, some humor involved, and it is, like, a couple years later after everything that happened. So you would think, you know, that there would be some funny things happening or some awkwardness between Wes and Liz since they're not together anymore. So I don't really, I don't really know. It's just, it's not even, like, awkward in, like, a fun way. It's awkward in, like, I don't care kind of way like it's just falling flat for me which kind of sucks because again I was like so excited for another YA romance by Lynn Painter but so far this is by far my least favorite one from her so yeah we will see if it gets better I'm hopefully finishing this tomorrow night but I'm going to read as much as possible of this tonight because I want to get to you know some other books that I've been in my TBR and honestly I just want to be finished with this already like This book did not have to be 435 pages. Like, I feel like this book is already way too long what it's supposed to be. Because Wes and Liz aren't even back together yet. And there's absolutely no romance going on. Like, zero. So I'm like, how is this a YA romance when they haven't even kissed again? I don't know. I just, I I hope things come together now. Because I feel like they will. Because I just got interested in what's happening now. So, but I really feel like the first, like, half of the book was not really necessary to be that long. So, yeah, that's it. Bye. Hey, so, hey there, guys. I just want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Again, I'm makeupless. <laughs> um, I just always end up making these videos, like, so late, or filming these clips so late because, like, I'm either, like, reading or I'm just, like, spending the day doing something else, so that is definitely not bright enough. That is definitely (laughs) too, too dark. So, um, tonight I just went to go see my best friend and we hung out at his place. Um, he actually let me finish my book while... Um, he was playing, um, this video game because I only had, like, 25 pages left before I left to go see him and before I got ready, like, did my makeup and stuff. So I really just wanted to finish it there, so I brought it with me just so I can finish it. So I did, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we actually went to pick up food. And we got food from Wingstop. And I always talk to him every time or tell him every time we pass it, like, when we go. Because usually, like, when I come to his area, 99% of the time we're going to the Smith Haven Mall or I'm just going to his house. Like, we don't really go out to eat unless we eat at the Smith Haven Mall. So we're always passing Wingstop, though, like, on the way back to his place. And I'm like, oh my god, I've never tried it. I really want to try them. Because, like, you know, sometimes you just want good wings. And, like, Buffalo Wild Wings really isn't that good anymore. So there's not really, like, that many good wing places around. 
Oh, let me grab my candle. That is what is going to be my next read. Where I already started reading it. Um, and I'm about to read right after I film this clip. Why am I all over the place? I just haven't been sleeping that great. So we picked up Wingstop. So good. I had half of the Hawaiian sauce and half of the new like sweet barbecue glaze or something. It was really good. So and then we got fries and we got like the Cajun corn. Chef's kiss. Everything was so good. Um so I definitely like want to order it with him again at some point. Um and then the day before yesterday um, I went to the, we, me and my boyfriend went to the ramen place that, um, we really liked like a week or so ago. I was like craving their ramen again. It was so good. So anyway, I primed my eyes with the, um, Anastasia eye primer and then I used the Clarins lip oil and then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay pressed powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette, what's so funny is that I kind of got reminded to use this from Batty Bean's video. Because honestly, I really don't watch that many makeup videos anymore. 99% of the time, if I'm watching YouTube, I am watching a book video. Like a TBR video, a reading vlog, all of that. Including Batty Bean's reading wrap-ups. I watch them every month. Um, but she said that she finally got this Melt palette added to her collection. And I'm like, damn girl, like this palette's been out for like three years and you're finally getting... The palette but hey like some she tests out so many eyeshadow palettes so it kind of makes sense so I whipped out my melt rust palette and this is like one of my all-time favorite fall palettes and it's still my favorite palette that I have from melt and it's just amazing I absolutely love this formula the formula in this one is is great and so is the one in the waiting room palette I think they're both spectacular um the uh what is it called which one is that I forgot the um Muerte palette and the um the Mary Jane I actually really like the Mary Jane formula too I know that was an unpopular opinion but I actually really like it but I do not like the Muerte formula so anyway it's funny because a lot of people, a lot of people like the Muerte one. I wanted to use like the more rusty tones in here. So I used, um, Rubbish in the crease and then I used, um, Rust to define the crease. It's so funny that I said rusty tones when I forgot that this palette was called Rust. Duh. And then I used a combo of Mar and rot on the outer corners this rot shade is like one of the best evening shades ever it's so dark it's such a dark brown and then for my lid I used tarnish and then for the brow bone I used classic because since we like we weren't going out somewhere or we weren't going to the mall or like going out to dinner or whatever I was like I don't want to wear anything too colorful but I also don't want to do anything too neutral and I feel like this palette's like absolutely perfect for it so I'm so happy that I used it and then um did I say I used that shade as my brow bone highlight yeah I did okay just making sure and then for the inner corners I just used a single shadow because the, the shimmer shades in here are a little bit too dark to use for um, an inner corner shade. So I just went into one of my ColourPop singles. But I've been trying to use quite a few of my fall palettes because obviously it's fall now. I've used like the Nomad Hudson Valley. I've used the um, or Ornate palette from ColourPop. I've used the Wine and Only. I've used the Kid You Not. I've used the Rust palette. So used quite a few of them already. So for my inner corners, and also because I just have been like pretty much on a eyeshadow palette no buy for like a couple of months at this point. So I'm just like really trying to just utilize my collection because I don't use half of my eyeshadow palettes anyway. Or I try to use them, but there's some eyeshadow palettes that I just don't use anymore. And then for my inner corners, I use the shade Save It For Later by ColourPop. It's like a deeper like gold why am I getting like the 
eyeshadow all over my fingernails. I mean, fingernails, finger, fingertips. <sighs> I'm fucking tired. And then for my waterline, I used um, Makeup by Mario's Black Liner. And then I just went in with the Essence Lash Primer. Excuse me. And then I just went into the Lancome Hypnose Mascara. And then I used the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. And then I primed my face with the Tara 28 SOS Spray and the Elf Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. I'm getting a little heartburn still from the um, wings. I did have a Tums, but I still feel like I'm getting a little heartburn. And then for my um, foundation, I went into the Glossier um, Very Light Stretch Fluid Foundation. I don't know why I can never read the name. And then for my concealer, I went into the Tarte C Concealer in the shade Porcelain 8S. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder. And then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into the House Labs um, Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer in the shade Light Level 1. Counting down the days until Joker um, comes out. It comes out in like six days. I'm so excited. Um, me and my friend are seeing it opening weekend. We literally can't wait. The, my best friend that I saw tonight. And then for my blush, I went into the Melt Cream Blush in the shade Lynx. I love pulling these out in the fall time. And then for my highlight, I also went into my Melt one. This is the Blush Light in the shade Ghost Light. I mean, it's such a great, such a great fall name. I just feel like Melt is such a ultimate like fall brand i always want to use melt in the fall time like the most and then i set my face with my milk makeup setting spray and then i set my brows with the essence brow gel and then for my lips i think i put it in here before i know i put it in here before i need to clean out this freak out oh, yeah it's right here but i need to clean out this bag <laughs> i need to clean out all my bags soon so for my lips, I went into the Melt Cosmetics lipstick. It's like my little sample. And this turned out to be like the perfect lippy to go with my look today. And this was the shade Frisky. This is the only Melt lipstick that I own. And it's really good. I like this one a lot. So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then we just played Mario Party and Mario Kart after we ate. Even though I was like, maybe we should watch a movie, but actually we're going to be going to the movies twice this week. We're going to see Wild Robot on Tuesday, and then we're going to see Joker on Saturday. Like, fall and winter time is movie season for me, so I'm super excited to see both of those movies. Um, so that's everything as far as my makeup goes, and as far as a reading update goes, and then I do have a few, like, fallish things coming up. Like I, well, let me tell you for a second and then I'll get into my review of the book I just finished earlier. Um, but, uh, I have my winery trip coming up with my girlfriends and I'm super excited for that. We always go out east here. And if you've ever been to Long Island before, you have to go out east. The Norfolk wine country, it's, it like rivals California's wine country. It is stunning I look forward to it every single year I'm so excited I can't wait and then comic-con is coming up next month already so two big things I'm looking forward to I love comic-con and then I also have my friend's birthday the day before that weekend and then also the new Mario Party game is coming out so me and my best friend might just play Mario Party all day after comic-con like, I might just come right over to his apartment and we're just going to stay in and play Mario Party for, like, the majority of the day. So, we're, like, super excited for it to come out. Um, so, anyway, why am I rambling about things that are... But, you know, I just... I love the fall time. I really love October and, and November. They're, like, my favorite times of year besides, like, you know... I'm really... I love the spring to the fall. Like, I thrive in from the spring to the fall it's really like the winter time like after Christmas I absolutely hate January and February they're like my least favorite months March gets a little bit better and then from March to all the way to December I pretty much love so 
That's why I looked forward to so many things in the fall time because I love the fall. And I know so many bitches are like, oh, I love the fall. But honestly, we love it. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I finished Nothing Like the Movies earlier today by Lynn Painter. Like I said, I finished it at my friend's apartment and I didn't like it. I really didn't like it, you guys. Sorry, I just need to take my sleeping pill real quick. Um, even though I've been sleeping like absolute shit the past couple of days, but I think I got two days of sleep this week, so it was more than like any other week. <laughs> I've just been like such an insomniac lately, so, but I'm, I'm fucking tired, so hopefully I can fall asleep tonight. I'm only going to read for like an hour and then I'm going to go to sleep, hopefully. And yeah, that book was not good. I gave it a 2.75 out of 5 stars. I never would have thought that I would have rated a Lynn Painter book under a 3 stars. I actually haven't rated any of her books 3 stars. So I didn't even round this book up to a 3 because I don't think it deserved it. And honestly, I'm thinking of lowering my rating to a 2.5. It was just, it didn't even have its moments. It was just so boring. It took 350 pages for them to fucking kiss finally with having absolute zero chemistry with each other. Even worse than primetime romance. Like, primetime romance, at least it made me laugh for, like, the first, like, 100 pages or so. And then it, it made me laugh, like, here or there throughout the story. But I feel like the the romance reads this month were just not hitting, so I just really didn't like it. I'll go into my review more in my reading vlog for finishing my September TBR. Um, so right now, but yeah, it was just super disappointing. After loving betting on you and that was my absolute favorite book from Lynn Painter and I've read four Lynn Painter books this year and now this was my fifth Lynn Painter book so it's not like I'm not experienced with reading her books and I really love her writing like I think I always look forward to her YA releases now and after absolutely loving betting on you this year and giving that a five stars to this it kind of felt like I was reading Riley Sager, like, from going from the only one left to being, like, the one of the best books I've ever read to Middle of the Night, which was the worst book I've read. Like, what's going on? What's going on, girl? But, yeah, I just felt like this book went in too of a serious direction, and I'm like, why are you doing that with a YA romance? Like, I understand if you want to have a message to it, if you want to, like, get into some deeper issues that sometimes college students go through but like honestly it didn't cover any of that just the some of the things that Wes was thinking were just kind of creepy honestly and it just like made me dislike his character like so much and it wasn't even funny like I feel like her adult romances they're like they're a little bit fluffier but also like they're entertaining, they're fun, they're funny, and maybe she wanted to have, like, a deeper meaning with this, but there was absolutely no funny parts of banter or good, like, not even any memorable scenes, like, from a movie. It was just boring. So, yeah, I really didn't like it. So, now I am reading Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayhair. I'm on page 77, um, cause I just started reading it tonight. Um, I actually did start this book like a couple of weeks back and I only got up to page like 40 because I did read the Pumpkin Spice Cafe on here last week. So now I'm back on reading on my Kindle and I'm so happy. I'm actually going to be reading my next, maybe possibly th next two books on Kindle as well. Well, I was, no, I was like three. <laughs> So yeah, I'm super excited to read Assistant to the Villain. It's actually been really funny so far. So I'm so glad. You know what? Perfect time to read this book because I needed something funny to and just something light and humorous. And so far I'm having a great time with it. 
Um, and then I'm going to read the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore to finish off the month. So then I don't have to worry about worrying. Oh my God. Reading that in October. It is 2 a.m. I need to go. Goodbye. Hey, so hey there, guys. I just want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I actually just got home from seeing my friend. We just went out to dinner. We went to like this um, Japanese place and that's all I really wanted to do is I just wanted to go out to dinner and then we um, just went to CVS in the same parking lot and then we just got ice cream at Baskin Robbins, which I am going to eat later hopefully. But the place that we went to to eat was really, really good. I actually ended up getting the chicken katsu there and it was really good. So, um, so yeah, I'm already home. I was only out for like two hours because like Again, we were just going to have dinner and then that was really it. Um, I didn't really want to be out that long. I also have a couple of plans coming up this week. So it's not like a huge deal if I wasn't out that long today. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer. And then I used the Clarins Lip Oil. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay Pressed Powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I used the Odin's Eye and Angelic Nequis Trick or Treat Palette. Because I really wanted to use it. I all but, uh, I forgot that I wanted to get the little ghost palette last year, but then it's just like literally every single like makeup pa uh, like eyeshadow palette has just left my mind at this point. And honestly, I really have not been interested in really picking up mostly any. I'm waiting to see like what the next color pop um collab is gonna be, but honestly, I really have like every single eyeshadow palette I could possibly want. The only exception that I'm going to make for eyeshadow palettes at this point is, again, if there's a ColourPop collab that I just can't say no to, but it would have to be, like, a Disney princess collection. Like, if they come out with a Cinderella one or an Aladdin one or um, a Sleeping Beauty one, I'm definitely getting those, like, regardless because I do like collecting those. But other than that, I haven't gotten a new eyeshadow palette, like I said, since the ColourPop Pokemon palette. And I think that was back in, like... May or June? I don't even remember when this came out, but I think it was the summertime. So I know I really didn't get any eyeshadow palettes last month for my birthday. I just got a shit ton of books because <laughs> it was my birthday month and I was like, all I'm going to get is books. And then this month, I really haven't bought too much of, I really, I don't think I've bought any makeup this month. This is like the first month where I have not bought a stitch of makeup. And the only thing I'm going to do is just replace things, like I said, that I need, that I've run out of, that I use all the time. And that's it. Like, I have so much damn makeup that I really don't need anything for, like, a lifetime. So, anyway, I went into, like, the go-to, like, red look that I usually do in this palette. And I love doing this look in the fall. I wore this look, like, three times last fall. So, I was like, you know what? I really just want to wear this look again you know, it's fall now and I really just want to start wearing like burnish orange kind of tones and red tones and I love like my deeper like wine tones in the fall time. So I went in with um, Cemetery in the crease, then I used Vampire Fangs to darken the crease. And then for the outer corners, I used Goblin and then for the lid, I've used Trick or Treat. I might have used this shade like the most in this palette because again I did this look like three times last year. Sometimes you just don't want to think about your look and you just want to do a look that works and I love this look. And then I went into Wicked on the Brow Bone and then for the inner corners I used Mummy's Curse. So that's everything I used from the palette. I still freaking love this palette. It's so good. But yeah, this was the last Onan's Eye palette I got besides the Christmas Eve one because I was not saying no to that palette this year. Um, I might actually wear that later this week if I decide to do a blue look on Tuesday. I might end up going with that palette because I love the blues in there. So, and then I went into the Makeup by Mario liner in the shade Black and then I went into the um, Essence lash primer and then the Lancome Monster Big mascara on the top lashes and then in the of course, the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. I might go pick up another one of these at um, Ulta because I feel like this one's getting a little bit dried out at this point. It's not really performing that great. 
So this is like the only makeup product I'm going to pick up because you guys know that's like one of my tried and true products that I've constantly repurchased. Oh, and I might also pick up another one of my e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primers because I'm actually almost out of this. So I might just get a replacement of that, but that'll be about it. I still have not filmed my makeup haul. It's so bad. It's just like 99% of the time when I'm home now or even like... If I have like a do nothing day, I'll either not even wear makeup or I'll just do like a no makeup makeup look. Like I'm not going to spend the time to do like my eyeshadow anymore. Like I'll just throw on concealer, mascara, and lip gloss sometimes and I'll be out the door. Because it's like I'm only really going to do full glam now with, again, if I see my friends, if we're going to like a big thing like the winery trip and Comic Con. Or if I'm seeing my boyfriend and I want to do like a lighter look, then I'll just do that. So but that's really it. I'd rather just be sitting and reading than spending the time doing my makeup now. And then I um, primed my face with the Tower 28 spray and the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. Like as I've gotten older, I still love makeup. I just don't need to wear it every day anymore. And also due to like my really sensitive skin... I can get really red sometimes if I've worn makeup like multiple days in a row. Like I've now worn makeup the past three days and now like I don't even want to wear makeup tomorrow. So <laughs> and then for my foundation I went into the Tom Ford Trace Lipstick Foundation in the shade 0, 0.0 Pearl. And then for my concealer I went into the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer in the shade LG3. And then I set my under eyes with the um, Pat McGrath Labs powder. And then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into, what did I use? Oh, yeah, I used the Marc Jacobs one. Oopsie poopsies. I am so full, though, because I could not stop eating that chicken katsu. It was so good. And I went into the Marc Jacobs Omega bronzer in the shade Tantric. And then for my blush... I actually went into my Jaclyn Hill Rouge Romance palette. I don't think you can even get this anymore. And I don't support Jaclyn Hill anymore. I haven't for like a couple of years at this point. But I'm still going to use her products because they're actually really good. But she does not have a makeup line anymore. So it doesn't even matter. But I use the shade Tempting right here. And I do really love using this palette in the fall time. Because I think that they're just such beautiful fall shades. Because I feel like I want to whip this out and use it a bit more now. But it was just a really pretty, like, simple pinkish shade for this look, and I thought it went perfectly. And then for my highlight, I went into my Half Magic Beauty highlighter. This one is the Light Trap Enter the Glow Dual Chrome Glow Powder Highlighter. It's such a gorgeous highlighter. I love this one so much. Um, I almost just ripped my makeup off and just set it without my makeup on, but I'm like, no. I don't want to go digging for another clip again. And like I said, it's only 7.45 right now. It's like last night I filmed my clip at like 2 a.m. in the morning. I was like, let me do it before I go read. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips, I just went into the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade... Uh, what did I use? Anywhere Caffeine. And then for my lips... I finally used this shade and I was like, you know what? This actually goes really well with what I'm wearing. So this was actually a lippy that my my friend that I went to go see, she gifted this to me during Christmas and I, last Christmas and I still hadn't worn it yet. And I'm like, oh my God, let me wear it tonight finally. So I just kept on forgetting to wear this. So this is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Cans. And I don't know if you guys have watched my channel like years ago, but literally all I used to buy is NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams and NYX Butter Glosses and NYX Lip Products. And then ColourPop came into my life and then I was like, NYX who? But honestly, this formula still really holds up. It's very, very light on the lips. And it feels like you're wearing a liquid lipstick, but you're not. Like, it is a liquid lipstick, but it's not like a matte liquid lipstick. And it does transfer, but it just looks so pretty. So, I'm glad that I finally remembered to wear this. And I was like, you know what? It goes pretty perfectly with what I'm wearing and my eyeshadow look. So, I'm so happy I finally wore it. 
So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I am still reading Assistant to the Villain on my Kindle. Um, I'm on page 157. I didn't really get as far as I would have liked to. I was just kind of slowing down a little bit with reading today and also like, I don't know, since I read nothing like the movies, it took me a little while to get into this book, but now I'm, I'm loving it. I think this is so funny and I'm just having such a good time and I feel like my choices with the times that I've read my books, I've been getting really good at, like, I feel like I've just been picking a lot of books for my mood and like the right place right time kind of thing even though this has been on my tbr like forever and this was my book on the bottom of my tbr prompt i'm so excited that i got to it now because i'm having such a great time so i should be able to read quite a bit more tonight i'm hoping to get up to page like 250 at least so probably another like 100 pages and then i should be able to finish it by tomorrow night because it's only 400 and something pages it's not even that long but so far, this is so funny. I'm having such a good time. So depending on how it ends, because I actually heard that it ends on a cliffhanger, I don't know if I'm going to want to go right into the second book very soon because, but at least that's another series that I've been putting off for a while. But then there's like 10 million other series that I want to read. It's like, guys, as soon as you become a reader, you're like, I, I posted like a get ready with me like, way earlier this year when I first like started reading a lot more and I was like these are all the books I want to read this year and then it's like my list has just grown and grown and grown like before that I'm like oh it's not that many but then the more you read the more books you want to get into and the more books you hear about and the more books you want to read and then it's like damn there's like hundreds of books that you want to read sometimes thousands but there's like at least a couple hundred books on my TBR so yeah, but I'm almost at 130 books already. Um, Nothing Like the Movies was like number 129, I think. And this, I think this is book 130. So that's really good. So yeah, that's it. Bye. Hey, so hey there, guys. I just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, I just threw on some really quick makeup um because i'm gonna go run some errands i need to go to target ulta and sephora so we're just gonna do that we might get some food too um because like actually the rest of the week i'm pretty busy i have like a couple of plans coming up i actually have plans all weekend this coming weekend so yesterday i actually did not leave the house and i didn't put any makeup on so i actually finished my book that i will tell you guys about in a minute i think i already told you guys that i was reading it on Saturday but I finished it yesterday and it was so good I loved it so I just went in with um uh tinted moisturizer and concealer today so I just primed with the uh tower 28 sos spray and the say star glow super gel primer and then for my um tinted moisturizer I just went into the elf halo glow li liquid filter I know a lot of people say that you're supposed to mix this in with your makeup, but I love wearing this all over my face. Like, you, you can use it however the fuck you want to. Um, I don't know why the bottle's so, like, greasy, though. Okay, I'm not holding that. I don't know why it's so greasy feeling. In the shade, uh, Fair. And I just love, again, putting it all over my face because it just gives such a natural, beautiful glow to the skin. And then for my concealer, I just went into the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear. In the shade ivory and I just did that on my eyes as a primer and under my eyes and then I just set my under eyes and my eyes with the rare beauty powder and then I just set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder um and then I did just decide to put on a little bit of eyeshadow and I just ended up going in with the Forget Me Not palette by Blend Bunny because I'm like you know what I kind of want to do like some sort of a look with this because I never really get to use this like fully and like I said this is kind of like not I feel like this palette was so redundant for me to get for myself because when I actually got really excited for them to come out with a, a palette like this like a neutral tone palette because I really don't have one I don't even know how to hold this because like this thing is so big I guess I can just hold it like that um it's just full of cool tones and like kind of redundant shades like even though 
Blend Bunny's like really good at like creating gradient kind of palettes. None of these tones work as a blush for me and actually even the bronzer tones are too dark for me as well. They, they created this as like a blush bronzer and highlighting palette and also an eyeshadow palette, but I'm like, the tones are way too cool tone for me to use as a bronzer and even a blush. Like this shade is actually way too light to be a blush. I don't know why they didn't make this like a little bit more of a deeper pink. And I don't know why they put so many neutral shades in here. They could have put like another like regular pink shade, like a deeper pink or something. Because that would have worked as a better blush shade than this. Because I tried to use this as a blush shade once and it just didn't even show up on me. It was super pale on me, even though on my pale ass skin. So I'm like, I don't know what what happened with this palette like I know a lot of people like it but like most people that I watched that reviewed it said that this palette wasn't really necessary but I do use this palette for the highlight shades and I use this like almost every day for my brow bone so I just went into anticipation in the crease and then for the lid I just went into magical because they can double as highlights and eyeshadows and they're just like some of the smoothest most blinding eyeshadows I've ever used um or highlighters and then for my inner corners I just went in with cheers and I also used that as my highlight and then for my uh brow bone I just went into brighter days as always so that's all I used and it just I just wanted a simple look today obviously because I'm not doing that much today um oh my god why is this fucking falling and then for my liner, I just went into the Make Forever Artist Color Pencil. Make up forever. Can I speak normally? You sound like you're on drugs half the time, Caitlin. Um, half the time? Half the time. God almighty. You sound like a dumbass. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, like, amazing that my brain, like, works so much faster than my lips do. And then for my, um, in the shade Limitless Brown, that's the the eyeliner I use and then I just went into the ColourPop lengthening mascara on the top and bottom lashes and then for my uh cream bronzer I just went into the ColourPop uh bronze sticks in the shade Laguna Beach because I just wanted to use that today and then for my blush I just went into the single blush um from the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights collection in the shade Lunar Has It because I really didn't care what blush I wore today I just wanted to use an everyday one that I use a lot and then, like I said, I highlighted with that shade from the Blend Money palette. And then I set my face with the Tower 28 spray again. And then I just set my brows with the um, Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips, I just went into the NYX Fat Lip Oil in the shade Follow Back. Because it was just the first lip oil that I knew I had in the in my drawer here. And also, I just wanted to go in with a lip oil today. So... Again, super simple. I don't need to wear like super involved makeup when I go on errands. So yeah, that's about it. And that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And as far as the reading update goes, I did finish Assistant to the Villain last night. Um, I think I finished it a little bit a little bit after 12. So, and I finished it on my Kindle because I told you guys I was reading it on here because it was it's on Kindle Unlimited. And I loved it. I thought it was so great that I am immediately going to go to Target today and pick up the second book because I want to read it like so badly. So I did start another book last night though on my Kindle because I think I told you guys I was going to. But I gave that book a 4.25 Assistant to the Villain because it was just such a fun time. I had such a good time reading it. And I was just on such a high after I finished it. I'm like, that book was so good. Like, that was probably my second favorite book in my fall TBR video on trying to finish like my September TBR. And I can't believe I put off that book for so long and now I'm happy that I at least read it when like the second book had more recently came out because the second book just came out last month in August. So it's like at least I finally read it so now I'm ready to read the second book. But also... um people said that the second book actually ends on even more of a cliffhanger than the first book and then the third book doesn't come out until next September 
So it's going to be a whole ass year before we're able to read the third book for people that have read this series. But at least I'm reading a series and it's not as much pressure as like reading other series right now. And I'm actually reading another series. (laughs) Um, Because I started the second book in the Dream Harbor series, which is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore was the first one. And the second one is Oh my god. The first one is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, and the second one is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore, Can I Speak? And I started that last night because I think I told you guys that this was going to be the last book that I read this month. I'm going to try and finish it today. I'm on page 139, so I did get almost 40% into it already. So basically, I'm just going to go run errands, and then I'm just going to come back home and read for the rest of the day. So it says I only have less than four hours left already. So I should be able to bang that out later. So I'm definitely going to read some more when I get home and hopefully like get up to page two something. But the book is a bit longer than the first one. The first one was like two something. This one's like 340 pages. So and I already read 140 pages pretty much. So I'm already like doing pretty good. So I don't really know. And I also ended up reading like almost 50 pages this morning because of course I couldn't fall asleep because what else is new? But yeah, so that's the plan. And then I think I'm just going to go right into Apprentice to the Villain because that's the whole reason why I'm picking it up today. And at least it's a book I just bought. So that actually works for that prompt as well. Because that will be a book that I just bought today. I actually haven't bought any books since I went to Barnes & Noble. And I think when I picked up Immortal Dark at Target and the new Fourth Wing paperback, I haven't bought anything since then. But I wanted to go buy this book because I might return it after I finish it. Because since I don't own the first one, it'll just annoy me if I don't own both. And also, like, I'm thinking about picking up the first Belladonna book because I don't own it because it's on Kindle Unlimited but it's like annoying me that I don't own the trilogy but I haven't even read that yet. I still ended up reading Assistance to the Villain first but then I'm going to read like so many books before the third book in that series comes out but I'm just so excited to pick it up so yeah bye. So hey there guys, I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I'm going to try and go to sleep earlier tonight because I really have not been sleeping and I'm literally getting mad at myself for staying up so late. So after I film this clip, I'm just going to get into bed and read for a little bit and hopefully go to sleep an hour earlier because I've been staying up to like 3.30. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You're just staying up doing nothing. Like, I mean, I'm reading and I'm watching YouTube, but I really need to stop. So I'm going to read for like a half hour and then hopefully just go to sleep. So I prime my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I use the Clarins lip oil and then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay pressed powder. I went to see Wild Robot with my best friend today. We went to our favorite place to eat before. He wasn't even that hungry though, but I got two tacos and a drink. I had to get the rum punch because I get the rum punch every time we go there. We've been there quite a few times now before we see a movie because that's like literally our spot. It's literally right across the street from the movie theater. We used to always go to um to uh Chili's because that's literally right next to it, but we've kind of been over Chili's. We might go there next time though, like because we're actually going to see a movie on Saturday, but we're not going to that theater on Saturday. We're going to go to the Broadway theater, which is a different one, um, that we might, like, have something different over there. Like, there's this ramen place that I want to go to there, or we could go back to Burger Village, which is one of our favorite places, or, um, something else. We'll see. We're also having a game night on Saturday, which I'm really excited about, and we're just going to order pizza from his favorite pizza place, it's gonna be good. I like my food options, okay? I'm a foodie. I like trying new stuff, but the movie was so, so good. I teared up a little bit. It was just so good. I really loved, like, did a lot. Like, one of the top five favorite movies of the year. It's just, it was fantastic. I loved it so much. And then for my eyeshadow palette, I went in with my ColourPop Hocus, can I speak? Color Hop? <laughs> ColourPop 
Hocus Pocus. I wanted to say Color Pop and Hocus together, so it's Color Hop. Um, so anyway, I think this palette is getting old at this point because it's starting to develop a bit of a smell, but I have had this palette probably four years, maybe. Did this collection come out before COVID? I can't remember if it was 2020 or 2019. What does it say on the back? It does not say the year. I do not think it was 2012 because it says 2012 on the back, but I don't think that's the year. Um, but it's at least a few years old, probably four years old at this point. I have used this palette literally every single October and that's literally like the only time I use it. But yeah, it's starting to smell a little bit. So I might have to stop using this at some point, which sucks, but you know, not every eyeshadow palette lasts forever. And honestly, this is probably one of the only eyeshadow palettes that I've noticed a bit of a smell to it. Really, all my other eyeshadow palettes from ColourPop are totally fine. Even like my very first ones, like the It's a Princess thing, it, the Midnight Masquerade, they still smell perfectly fine. It's a Princess thing was like my third ColourPop palette. But again, not every palette lasts forever. I don't know, it might have just been the pigments that they used in this one, but it is starting to smell. So I might not be using this when it comes to around... Halloween. I probably will just be using the Hocus Pocus 2 one instead. I have plenty of other Halloween palettes to use, like the Trick or Treat palette from Odin's Eye, the Melt Cosmetics Waiting Room, the Hocus Pocus 2. Um, I have a couple others, but anyway, I don't think I'm going to be using this on my eyes anymore, but I still used it today and I didn't get any reaction from it, so it's still performing fine, so let me know if I should be using it still. <laughs> So anyway, I went into Night of Frolic in the crease, then I darkened up the crease more with Bewitched, and then I used, I call it a bus on the outer corners, and then for the lid, I used Tis Firm. I pretty much use this shade like every Halloween. It's pretty much like this one or this one or this one are the ones I usually go for. It's so funny. It's just like in the diagonal. <laughs> are the ones I use during Halloween and then for my brow bone I went in with full moon and then for the inner corners I went in with wench but I had to use a spooky palette the first day of October I mean come on we're in spooky season now we are thriving uh, Halloween is my favorite holiday besides Thanksgiving I love Halloween and then I went into makeup by Mar Mario's liner in the shade black and then I went into the essence lash primer and then for my mascara I went into the Lancome Monster Big and then for my lower lashes I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery and then I primed my face with the Tower 28 SOS Spray and the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer and then for my foundation and concealer I went into the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear in the shade 120N and then for my concealer I went into the Urban Decay Naked Quickie Concealer in the shade 10NN, and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder, and then I set my face with a new powder, because I did get a couple of things from Sephora yesterday. I actually haven't shopped for makeup in a little while. I still have these next to me, and I still haven't filmed a haul yet. I might just film a haul with no makeup on, or maybe just like a no makeup makeup look, but literally like every time I go home, all I want to do is read, so... I have not had any time to film in the middle of the day unless I'm not wearing makeup and I'm filming like a reading vlog or I'm filming a get ready with me of my reading wrap up. Literally like the only get ready with me's that I have filmed have been reading wrap ups. That get ready with me that I filmed that I posted last week about is memory um, how much you remember about a book doesn't mean you really read it. That Get Ready With Me is probably a few months old. That is, it took me forever to get that video up, so. And I have another one of, like, my everyday makeup routine that I still haven't uploaded yet. So hopefully I'll get that up, like, next week because I have, like, a couple of other videos to upload <coughs> this week because it's the first week of a new month, so. I always upload my October, my TBR and my reading wrap-up, so. I think I'm going to film my wrap up tomorrow. I haven't filmed it yet because I have to get my TBR up as well. So I filmed that like a few days ago already. I couldn't wait to film that. And then for my powder, 
I went in with a new powder that I picked up from Tower 28 and this is the Jet Set Blur and Set Powder and this is in the translucent shade. What I don't understand is that as soon as I brushed my brush in this, the like powder was like crumbling already on the top and I was like, why is it doing that? Oh my god, it's crumbling like so badly. Why did I open this? This is, I literally picked this up at the store. Why is this crumbling? I'm going to return this. Why the hell is that crumbling in the pan? And it got all over my Kindle. What the fuck? This is a brand new product. It's not like it got shipped from the website. Okay, hold on. Okay, I usually love Tower 28 products, but they have... I don't think they've ever done a powder product before because they have cream bronzers and cream blushes. They don't have powder ones and they've never come out with a powder before. And then like they have glosses and lip tints and mascara and um, what else? what's the other thing that they have? Why am I forgetting? Um, liquid tinted moisturizer and concealer. And I've tried every single product from Tower 28 because I've told you guys I try every single product they come out with. But I'm like, what the fuck? Like, did it? I don't even know. Like, I didn't even drop it. Nothing. But at least you can return anything to Sephora within the 30 days. So, okay. So, anyway, um, what was I up to? I set my face and then I, Yeah. And then I went into the House Labs bronzer in the shade Light Level 1. I don't have to show you guys that one again. I use it all the time. And then for my color, uh, for my blush, I went into the ColourPop Super Shock blush from the Snow White collection in the shade Fair Enough. Love this shade. It's so pretty and it's a really good, like, red shade. And then for my highlight, I really liked the highlighter because um, I just picked up this one. <sighs> So, I finally got to pick up a highlighter from Iconic London. I've been wanting to try their highlighters for a while. So, they had this one in store, and this one's the Lit and Luminous highlighter. I'm talking... Why do I talk for so long in these clips? And this is why these are so long. So, I went into the Iconic London highlighter in the shade... I guess it's called Universal. This was really, really pretty. It's like a soft pinky shade, and I thought it would just work perfectly. It's not too pink, though, but this is so good for my pale-ass skin. This is like a perfect shade for my skin tone, and it looked really pretty on the skin. I really liked that. And then I set my face with the um, Milk Makeup Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips... Where is my lippy? <laughs> In my poise. Obviously in my poise. Do you know I call it a poise? <laughs> um, so where it looks? Right here. Um, I don't know why I can't find half of my makeup products lately. Like, not not the one I just grabbed, because obviously it was in my purse. But um, I need to reorganize my makeup, so... Me cleaning my room is such a work in progress, I swear. And then I went into the Pat McGrath Labs liner in the shade Structure because, again, I couldn't find my other red liner. And then for my lips, I wanted to go in with a bolder color today because it's the peak of fall. It's October. So we are going in with browns and reddish burnt reds. And I went into the Odin Zai Angelica Nequis lipstick in the shade Shadow Creature. And this is such a pretty, like, red. If you're afraid of red, this is a great red for you because it's not, like, too vibrant. And it's such a beautiful, like, deeper red shade. And she literally made that shade for people that are, like, a little bit nervous to wear red but don't want something, like, too vibrant but still want something a little bold. It's so gorgeous. Okay, so that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as the reading update goes... I guess I should never listen to myself about what I want to read <laughs> because I didn't end up reading Apprentice to the Villain. I ended up starting a new release that just came out today. I mean, I was going to read this right after Apprentice to the Villain anyway if I um, read that first. I was just going to read this, but then I decided to read this first because 
Binging the Cinnamon Bun bookstore yesterday literally almost put me in a reading slump. I'm like, I don't want to touch a book right now. So I'm like, I need to just pick something on my Kindle that is going to be mindless and easy to read. And I'm like, I literally, I think I'm going to do like a recommendations if you're in a reading slump video. I have so many book videos that I want to do. I want to do like a beginner's guide to fantasy. I want to do like every popular romance read um, that I've read and also comparing like the other romance books that I've read from the same author. I really want to do a romance guide as well um, and I really want to do like a book slump recommendations video and I always think if you want to get out of book slump or you feel like you might be falling into one because I've never actually not read every day because I love it so much, but also, like, I always feel like I'm gonna get into a book slump, like, at the very beginning of a month, or, like, at the very end of a month, because I feel so overwhelmed, like, getting all the books done that I want to get done in a month, that it's, like, the next month, it's, like, I don't really feel like reading. <laughs> so, I'm, like, what better way to read something than a thriller because a thriller is always going to get me to read it because I always get sucked into a thriller and I always think the easiest author to read is Frida McFadden's books and she just had a new release come out and this was on my TBR anyway for this month which is Frida McFadden's The Boyfriend so this is what I decided to read over Apprentice to the Villain um so I got up to page 155 so I still got pretty far Usually her books only take me a day to read, but honestly, after binging the Cinnamon Bun bookstore yesterday, I really did not want to binge a book today. I was like, I want to take my time a little bit with it. I want to do something else other than read. So I read like 80-ish pages before I got ready to leave. I didn't read this morning. I was like, I really don't want to, even though I wasn't sleeping anyway. So I took like a 12-hour break from not reading at all, so... Um, but now I'm getting really sucked into this. It's not really that creepy. It's more so just like just gripping me and I just want to find out what happens. So I don't think this one is as like unput downable as like her other thrillers and I think that's why I've been able to binge them in a day. But also this one isn't creeping me out so I can I feel like I can read it at night because sometimes like when a thriller creeps me out, I really can't read it at night because then, like, sometimes I'm, like, creeped out, like, all night and I'm, like, nervous to go to sleep. So, yeah. But this one is just, like, compelling and it's not really creepy. It's not giving me those creepy vibes. It's just like, oh, somebody got killed. So, <laughs> yeah. So, that's about it. Um, also, I am not going to be reading the physical book of Apprentice of the Villain. I'm actually going to be returning it and I'm going to be reading it on my Kindle. <laughs> so I'm going to keep, I have just been loving using my Kindle lately. I went from reading like not really that many books on my Kindle the past two months because I had so many physical books to get through to reading like four books on the Kindle and now this is going to be my fifth book and I literally have just had I think a week of Kindle reads with um with um Assistant to the Villain, Cinnamon Bun Bookstore, and now The Boyfriend and I'm going to read Apprentice to the Villain on here. So then I will have read four books in a row on my Kindle. It's just so much easier to read on the Kindle. So that is it. I'm going to go. I don't know why I keep on rambling. So I purchased it on my Kindle and I'm going to read Apprentice to the Villain right after I finish The Boyfriend. So yeah, that's it. Bye.